What are we doing poorly as activists, maybe even counterproductive? What are you seeing out there in the ether? You're like me, you're on the front lines. And I, I, there are things that frustrate me about some of the tactics. What are we, what do you think we're doing well or need to do more of? And what do you think is counterproductive and we need to walk away from? I don't know, Shannon, you want to start or you want me to punt over to, uh, to Paul real quick? give you a chance i've got some clear answers i think we need to do more community building and creating spaces for people that are going through deconversion so that because people are coming out of religion all the time and it's difficult for them to find their footing and this is a bit of a space that's that's kind of chaos it's not not just all all activists are chaos that's not what i'm saying but like the the space when you come out of religion is difficult to find your footing on um, when you're kind of like rebuilding everything about your your perception of of the world and your epistemologies. So I think we need to do a better job of creating spaces for people who are deconverting and just creating b- broader community as people who are non-believers just in general. What I think that we're doing a good job of right now is kind of making some of the arguments seem tired. Like a lot of people who otherwise wouldn't have been familiar with things like divine hiddenness or the Kalam are now more exposed, like granted somewhere between like a rudimentary level to like an expert level, like somewhere in that gradient. But a lot of people really understand the counter apologetics a lot better because we have so many different types of communicators in this space, looking at it from so many different perspectives now because this space is becoming more diverse and more varied with all different types of educators and all different types of different fields really coming to the forefront. I think that that is starting to to happen a lot more. And I think that that's, I think that's great. I'm seeing less of, and I'm thankful I still see it, but in the meme verse, you know, these zingers, science flies you to the moon, religion flies you into buildings. And there's always the twin towers. And I'm like, you know, it's just science has also created thermonuclear weapons. You know, what I'm saying this I, this reductive idea that science could not ever or has not ever been misused, or that yeah. people have not been able to use a religious model to do something else, even though the foundations are incorrect. It's so freaking reductive. Religion is a mental illness. There's a page on Facebook called "Religion is a Mental Illness." I did a whole video on that. It's pinned, it's pinned to the top of my YouTube channel. It pisses me off the most. I was not mentally ill when I was, a, it just makes me crazy, Shannon. Makes me right. crazy. Like there's nothing about my disposition, personality, intellect, nothing about that changed the moment I realized that God didn't exist. But functionally what you're saying, and this is why it's wild to me, is that I was mentally ill and then I changed my mind about something and that cured my mental illness. That's what you're saying, which is bananas, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's bananas and completely unhelpful. It's functionally like saying, well, if you have chronic depression, you can just, you can change your mind one day and just not have chronic depression because that's, that's the model under which I think mental illness operates, that you can have it change your mind about something and then not have it anymore. That's the position you have to hold. And it's, it's crazy. I I went into way more detail in the video. It's pinned to the top of my channel. I went through the DSM. I went through all of like a bunch of history of mental illness, what the definition of religion is and how it's used in the field, why it does and doesn't apply all of it in great detail and still in the comment section after i lay it out and put all the resources down and like here's the links here's all the papers here's the actual dsm here's the the icu here's all of the stuff that you need to put this together for yourself people were literally still saying i don't care what you say i don't care what you say several of them assumed i was religious and came and i'm assuming probably didn't even watch it because i say i'm an atheist within the first 10 minutes of the video and are like yeah you religious people constantly try. i'm like, so you didn't even watch it. <laughs> you didn't even, no. it's crazy to me. Well, that, I mean, I think it's uh, really a evidence of our own humanity, the idea that we think as higher primates and quote unquote, you know, skeptics, et cetera, that we are immune from bad ideas or reductive thinking. I'm doing a whole 
speech on this later on in the year that uh, gets into many of the things I think we do that are counterproductive. You, you can't go on a, a religious page and tell everybody, grow up, and expect everybody on the page to be like, you know what? I am really a, an intellectual infant, but now that you've done this drive-by and told me that I am, I'm going to now become mature. It, it just, it, I, it, I really, really get frustrated. I think the thing that I'm seeing more of that I love is we are educating people about identity beliefs, why people rally and defend, and why we have this visceral emotional reaction to identity. What, what is an identity belief? What's the psychology at play? How do you, you know, make the crack that lets in the light? Understanding that kind of thing, epistemology. I'm seeing more of those discussions I'm trying to lead more of those discussions. I'm encouraged by that. I think that's one thing that I'd like to see certainly more of. Paul, best and worst, uh, you got anything for me? I just, maybe it's a counter to some of this stuff is it, it's tough to know where the line is because I know in my own deconstruction journey, I needed Bill Nye, but I also needed George Carlin and Ricky Gervais to intelligently poke some fun at, uh, you know, the sacred cows, as you've once put it, Seth. Um, now, let me jump I, in, I, Paul, I, though. Is that the difference? Like, because I go hard at the ideas. Hell, I made the story of Susie video, right? Mm -hmm. uh, going after the ideas and saying it's safe to do so and going after the person who holds the ideas. Would you draw a line of demarcation between the two? I absolutely would. But I, I fear that sometimes when we say these kind of things, what, what I get my audience coming back to me is like, you're, you're wanting to tone police or you want everyone to use my tone. And I don't think that the tone that I use, while I think it, it was a refreshing voice at the time, there's more, a lot more like it now. I, I do think that all tones are needed, but I, I do love the, what you just specified there, that the, the sarcasm, the biting, the, the attack is, is not at the, the intellect or the character or what, or, you know, all the, not be smirching. You're right. It's, it's to make fun of, well, this, how would this arc idea even work? Or, you know, do these 10 commandments make sense? So, but I do think there is room for, as, as you said, just for all tones. So that I don't think there's one right way to do it, even though I choose to never swear because I, the kind of Christian I was would have stopped listening when I hear the first F word, well then, you know, I'm just, everything after that is white noise. Um, I do understand why sometimes more passion, you know, is, is a complimentary thing. So I do, I guess, love that we are getting more of those voices. And as you say, I would encourage going after the ideas. I, I'm going to adopt that now. That's a great, great word. What do you say? So you uh, defer the swearing to Shannon. So it's like a, <laughs> sort of correct. a cosmic right. equilibrium taking place there. <laughs> we, 